Hi guys, I want to say thank you so much for supporting this video tutorial series on the FA. Um, I am absolutely enjoying sharing my knowledge and, um, and helping you guys improve on, on how you can use this awesome machine. Um, because I think that um, a lot of the guys, I would say if I had to estimate, I would say 70% of the guys are not using the FA to its full potential. And that to me is sad because you've paid the money for this machine. You might as well just, you know, um, learn it and actually use all the features in order for you to become a better performer. And I think that is, that is my opinion about the FA. This is a performer's keyboard, a performer's workstation. It's, it's for the guy that wants to um, have that complete sound. Um, whether you're playing with a full band or not, you can still have that full um, eight-piece band sound or how many ever pieces you have in your band. Um, and that is actually the purpose of this video tutorial series, is to show the guys that there's more to this machine. It's, it's absolutely Awesome. So in this video, I would like to discuss how I use the sample pad. There's various uses for the sample pad. I dig into how you can actually bring all the features of the FA together in order um, to, to make everything work for you on stage or during a performance. And the sample pad is one of those things that, that I use and, and that I enjoy. I, I absolutely love it. So let's dig into it. Firstly, before we get to the um, uh, to discuss the sample pad, I have made <laughs> some edits to our studio set as well. Um, there were some settings on, I can't remember whether it was my door or my interface, but there were some settings on either one of them that made the monitoring of the levels in my headphones that I'm using not as accurate as I would like it to be. Uh, for example, um, the bass, uh, let me go back, the bass in my opinion was a bit, um, where did I put the bass? There we go. No, there we go. So the bass in my opinion was a bit too loud, so I brought it down to 60. Um, the drums as well, I went into shift tone edit and I think I brought the level of the kick I also brought down to 75 and then the snare I brought down to 100 and also the snare rim as well and if I'm not mistaken I brought the organ down as well to 40 to my ears that just sits um, better okay so that's the changes that I've made to the studio set I want to show you how we can use a sample pad in a live performance. Now, the sample pad plays two formats of, of files. It plays WAV files and MP3 files. My preference is WAV files. Um, it's a higher quality of file. Um, and I just think it sounds better when it goes out through the front of house. Everything that we will be loading up and doing, you'll see it's WAV files. Okay. So the sampler um, can do two things. It can either play full songs, um, and I do use this on occasion when I don't want to take my computer and Ableton, etc. And I also only have to perform one song or two songs. And it's maybe a, a, a concert format as opposed to a service format. You know, in a concert format, you do your item and you get off stage in a service format. Um, you do the item, and if the spirit flows, then you need to flow with that. So um, having a song played from start to finish is, is maybe not going to work in a service setup, but it might work in a concert setup because you just do your thing and then you get off. I do use it to play full songs, so I'll show you an example of that. But when I play with a full band, and this, in my opinion, is, is also where the, the FA just outshines the rest. When I play with a full band, I use the sampler mostly just to trigger click tracks and loops. Now, <laughs> I know that there are guys that don't like to perform with click tracks or loops or metronomes, 
um, you know, that's your preference. But as for me and my band, uh, we will serve the Lord with click tracks and loops and metronomes. Um, <laughs> I just believe it keeps the timing. Everybody's locked to a certain tempo. And I, I also think it makes you, in certain instances, a better musician. Towards the end of a song, and especially in the church, when you want to bring out the climax of the song, the tendency is to speed up the song. Um, so if you start in 80 BPMs, uh, the band will, with even out thinking it, move the song up to 90, and then for them that is bringing out the climax of the song. To me, that is a lack of skill. Um, if you are able to bring out the climax in the song at exactly the same tempo that you started it, the song, then um, that to me shows skill. And when I say skill, I don't mean just um, uh, playing and the chords that you press. I mean your combination of sounds and how you use the features of whatever equipment you work with, etc. So I use click tracks. My band use click tracks. When I play with a full band, I don't usually, I don't need my computer because the FA does everything. Let's click sequencer. And let's pull up the loop that we created in the previous video tutorials here. So I go to song select. And, oh, okay, the loop is already pulled up, but let's load it again. Let's just see if that's the right loop. Okay, perfect. That's the loop. But what I'm going to do is, at the moment, the FA is set at 60 BPM. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to move the tempo up to, uh, let's say, 75. And the reason I'm going to do it is because later on in the video, I want to illustrate something else. So let's see how that sounds at 75 BPM. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. So what I do is now I want to export this loop. So I go shift. Um, Song Utility, Export Song, and I'm going to use Wav Stereo Mix, the second one, Wav Stereo Mix. I select it, and I execute, and OK. Um, OK, I've already done that. I'm going to um, overwrite it. OK. That's done. So what the FA has now done is the FA has exported this loop at 75 BPM and it has put it in the exports folder of the SD card that you have loaded in your, in your FA. What you now have to do is take out that SD card, load it in your computer and literally just move that loop from the export folder into the import folder. That's all you have to do. You don't need a door. You don't need any other music program. You just plug the SD card into your computer and you take it from the export folder and move it into the import folder. So I'm going to do that quickly and then we can continue with the video. So all I've done now was I have copied that loop uh, from the export stereo mix uh, folder on the SD card and I've moved it into the imports folder of the uh, SD card. Okay, so now we want to load these loops. I have that loop now on my SD card, right? So now you come in and you want to lo uh, uh, load all your loops into your sample pad. You click on sampling, just see how much space you have to load in either full songs or loops. That is 16 empty slots on bank one. And then you have four banks. That's 16 times four. That's 64 click tracks or full songs that you can load on the FA. That is massive. I mean, if you play a service or a concert um, that has 64 songs in, uh, please don't invite me. I don't want to attend your three-day uh, uh, concert. <laughs> okay, um, little jokey joke. Okay, so now we want to load all those loops and even a full song into the sampler. So we go shift, sample import, and I have um, 
Every praise there, everybody knows every praise, so that's why I chose it. I like to mark the key and the tempo that I do uh, uh, um, songs in as well, just for my reference. So I have every praise. I have our test loop in number two, and then I have three other loops, um, all in different tempos. Our loop is at 75 BPM. Right, just remember that I actually should have um, renamed it and just uh, put in the tempo in there as well. But be that as it may. So in the first slot, I'm going to load up every praise. I'm going to execute. Okay. So now I've loaded the full song, every praise, obviously without the keyboard part, because the keyboard part I'm going to play live. I've loaded in slot number one. And I am going to load all my other loops in slots uh, two, three, and four. Okay, so I go sample import. I'm going to put our test loop in there. Execute. Okay. And then I'm also going to sample import. Let me put one at 60 BPM in there. Um, execute. And then we let me import sample import and put another one at 52 bpm that loop is at 52 bpm select execute okay okay so now i have my full song at slot number one our loop that we've created at 75 bpm at slot number two a loop at 60 bpm at slot number three and a loop of um, in uh, slot number four at 52 BPM. I then, let me just turn off uh, or lower the volume of these loops. So I go into sample edit. Um, let me select our song every praise and let me just bring that down to uh, maybe 50. Um, the next loop I'm going to bring down maybe to 13. And then the next one I'm going to bring down maybe to 30 as well. And then the next one I'm also going to bring down to 30 as well. Now, also, if we go back to our um, full song, you can see that there is a loop section on the full song. That loop section is off. The reason it is off is because this is a full song. I want it to play from start to finish. There's no space that I want it um, to loop. But the second one is a loop. So I'm going to activate the loop section because I want it to continuously loop and just carry on forever until I stop it. And the same for with the third one. I'm going to activate it, say yes. And the same with the next one. I'm also going to activate it and say on. Right. So now let's hear what that sounds like. My pad utility, I'm first going to change the function of my pad um, to a sample pad just to, to make this video easier. So I go into pad utility, pad utility, pad mode, and I'm going to click one, and now my pad is a sample pad. Right? So I have access to those four tracks and loops, or well, the one track and the three loops that I've loaded in my sample pad now just by way of activating it. So let's hear how every pray sounds. So I press one and press hold simultaneously. Okay, that sounds good. Let me hear how what it sounds like when I play. Okay, so that's a bit too soft. So I go into sampling again. Shift, sample, edit. And I'm actually going to raise the volume because the, the, the level between this song and what I'm playing on the keyboard needs to you know be correct so in order for it to sit nicely so let me try that again i'm gonna press one and hold uh -uh. i want more so let me go into sampling again shift sample edit push up this maybe make it 90 exit exit Let's try that again. It's 
almost there, I think. Well, almost there. Let me go sampling. I want more volume on the sample pad. What you're actually now doing is you are mixing the level of whatever you're going to play on the keyboard live plus the track. And you want that to sit nicely and be nicely uh, knit together because um, it just sounds better live then. Okay, so then I go exit, exit. Let me try that again. That sits better. It's to our God, every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise. Okay, you get the picture. So that's how I use the sampler in order to play full songs for whenever I need to. But that's when I play alone. That's when I, it's just me, my keyboard, I'm going to um, quickly do an item, etc, etc. But most cases, I play with a band or at least two or three um, more musicians. In that case, I only need the sampling pad to trigger my loops that I've created. So if we click on sampling, we'll see that the loop that we've created is in slot number two, there's another loop in slot number three that I've created and another loop in slot number four, right? If I press number two, okay, that's a bit soft. Let me bring up the level of that one. So I go into sampling, shift, sample, edit. Let me bring that up also to maybe 90. Preview. Maybe push that to 100. Okay. Exit, exit, exit. Okay. I'm pressing 2 and hold. Ah, I, I know what's wrong. So we've exported that specific sample from the sequencer. And what the FA does is the FA also... Um, includes when it export it includes that tail end of the loop um, which we actually don't need just listen to this we don't need that you understand we need it to just loop continuously so now we have to edit that sample so we click on sampling shift sample edit we want to cut off that tail end of the sample. So what I'm going to do is I've moved the cursor to the end point and I'm going to move that end point in to where it needs to be. And you can see there's a little spot. I don't know if you guys can see it. So that probably means that that there is um, that's that's one of the clicks. So let me see if I move it back here. Preview. It's almost there. You see, it is looping, but it's not looping at the right space. That just means that you have to move the end, end point of that loop um, so that the loop is seamless. Uh-uh, too far. Move it back in. Mm -mm. More in. Oh, that's almost. Okay, a little bit. That's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so now it's looping at the right spot. So I exit, exit, exit. So now if, if I want to trigger that loop, I press 2 and hold. And it's looping exactly the way that we want it to loop. Every praise 
is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Okay, whatever uh, you want to play at 75 BPM. Okay, so now number two is right. All right, let me uh, uh, deselect the hold. I go into sampling again. These two loops at the last, uh, in slots number three and four, these are actually loops that I created in my door. So I know it's perfect. That's why I only need, if I show you here in, uh, in the uh, edit screen, I only have to loop it because I know I've edited in my door already perfect. Um, so it's ready to be looped. That's all I needed. Okay, so I exit, exit, exit. Let me check. It's looping perfectly. Perfect. Our loop was at 75 BPM. Loop number three was at 60 BPM. I'm now going to trigger number four. That's at 52 BPM. exactly how I use the sample pad. It's either going to be to play full songs for an item uh, more often than not in a concert setup um, starting from start to finish or for the gospel guys that plays with metronomes, click tracks, loops, etc. The sample pad of the FA is absolutely perfect. Just imagine you coming in on a Sunday morning, the only thing you're traveling with is your SD card or on a Thursday, whenever the, the, the choir practice is or the worship team practice, you come in with your SD card, five minutes before the time, boom, you load up all your samples, and you're ready to go. And on the FA, you have all the sounds that you need to play any song, in my opinion. You know, other guys are going to feel differently. The sample pad is actually perfect to play loops, click tracks, and metronomes. There is little that this machine cannot do and I have to be honest I love my FA uh, I'm gonna love it for the next couple of years so I hope that this video has shown you how I use the sample pad how you can get the most out of the sample pad and it is absolutely brilliant um, dig into what it can do I implore you to experiment with whatever features there are you can't break this thing that is one of the things that I want to say. You can't break it. If something, if you've done something and you don't know how to undo it, all you have to do is just do a factory reset. And then you have your FA back again. So you can't break it. I encourage you, go in, explore, do whatever you need to um, uh, do, and, and, and just have fun. Until the next video, keep well. Bye.